we're doing a series of vlogs looking at where we're at and where we're going after three years of off-grid permaculture homesteading. Hey guys, I'm Carrie here at Thousands of Roots Homestead and I'm going to be talking about off-grid laundry today. Uh, before I do though, I've been really, really thinking a lot about this video. Uh, after four years of experience and trying to come up with something that works for us, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and you know there's really so many good videos out there. I thought, why do I need to do a video when there's just so much great information out there? Um, a thank you to Justin Rhodes and his family who've kind of pioneered this um, family homestead uh, vlogging <laughs> movement that's been um, just such a joy to be a part of. The really cool thing about this movement is that these channels are not in competition against each other. We actually are collaborating together. And each channel, each family has their own unique situation. And so you, the viewers, get to get little nuggets of wisdom and hopefully hope uh, just from each individual channel because we all have a different experience to share. So hopefully I can share a little nugget with you today about off-grid laundry. Our unique situation here is a journey of building an off-grid permaculture homestead over the past three and a half years now. Uh, completely debt-free, so very slow, out of pocket. And we have six children. My husband works full-time and I'm recovering from what's called mold illness. And my husband has dealt with a little bit of chronic fatigue as well. So that's a game changer when it comes to laundry. <laughs> I uh, went through that honeymoon phase of homesteading and did all laundry by hand for our huge family for a little over a year. And uh, you know, that was, that was okay. Off-grid laundry can really be as simple as some kind of container. Here we're using our tub right now which is great, but it's a trick when you want to take baths. I've also used just really cheap little containers like this to wash in, or here's a bucket from Walmart that I've used in the past. So you basically just need some kind of container, some water, soap, of course, um, a way to plunge or agitate. And I've got this little rapid washer plunger that it works okay. It does the job, you know. It moves things around a bit. It doesn't work as well in the bathtub because the water's kind of more shallow, but it helps. Actually, the best way I found to plunge, plunge is like this. Little feet work amazing. Get two or three of them in there and you can get a load of clothes washed pretty quickly. How's that, Nathan? Is it fun? Kind of fun? You could probably find funner things to do, but it's not so bad, huh? Thanks for helping. Children make awesome laundry agitators, let me tell you. And then, of course, you need a place to hang. Right now, I'm actually using this Petzerata, or whatever you call it, to hang our dirty clothes that are wet. Because if I just throw them into a clothes hamper, we've got mildew issues. It's the middle of summer here in Missouri, and it's just too humid to um, throw this stuff in the hamper. These work great. I love the Petzeratas. I'm definitely going to invest in more of those in the future. And then, of course, just the old laundry line outside, which we have as well. If you've never heard of mold illness, it's just basically that my body is not able to properly detox biotoxins, so molds and mildews and things. One of the biggest things, actually, biggest symptoms is chronic inflammation and chronic fatigue. Well, since we moved to Missouri and the humidity is so high here through a good part of the season, spring, summer, fall, I uh, was almost non-stop sick with hay fever, allergy type symptoms, and severe fatigue. Uh, but this year, I've not had any of the allergy symptoms and therefore the fatigue has been better. I'm just so thankful that I'm coming to the end of that healing journey and feeling much better these days. But for now, uh, hand laundry is just kept to a minimum and we have wonderful neighbors. Thank you, Brants, for uh, doing our laundry. Over the past year, they've done at least two, lo two, three loads a week for us, faithfully, every single week, without complaint. It's just been an amazing blessing. But what do you do if you have a large family, maybe you've got some kind of illness, fatigue, and you don't have neighbors like we do? Or let's say our neighbors take off on a vacation. Then what do I do? So 
I have got a plan. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking for months, years now, what am I going to do about off-grid laundry? So I'd love to share with you that plan, um, just in case you're in a similar situation or if you're just interested in this off-grid life we're living. We are going to be turning this messy little storage area into a dual purpose laundry facility. As soon as our shop is finished, all of this storage stuff goes. Uh, we're gonna have to find a new place for our clothes. It's, this area has just been a catch-all. It's the back of our cabin and it's intent, intended to be a laundry place. We actually have, I don't know if you can see, we have this sink in here but it's not really an appropriate sink for laundry. It's got small bowls. So once that shop is finished, I'm going to be cleaning this out and we're going to transition um, into having our own laundry set up. And what that's going to look like for us, uh, because of the chronic fatigue issues, large family, and th honestly, there's just so many other ways I'd rather be spending my time on the homestead than doing laundry. So our laundry situation is going to ebb and flow with the seasons there's a washing machine that i would like to get here it is in amazon thank you so much to laura from teal house farm i'll leave a link to her video because i'm just really thankful for her video that pointed me to this machine so here it is the two loads she did it was about an average of 100 to 150 watts per load so very very little power used with the costway and also I believe the water usage is um, less than half a normal washer so in the summertime and when we have good solar we'll be using the machine then right beside that back in the same little corner is going to just be a regular old laundry sink that we can do hand washing loads in and then I'm hoping that right beside the sink will be an indoor drying space for during the winter when we have our cook stove going all through the winter, at least six months of the year, our cabin is incredibly dry, actually too dry, and we need some added humidity. So I want to dry our clothes inside during that time. Uh, lesson learned about drying clothes though is that they don't dry so well during the humid months. So spring and fall, we'll probably hang them outside uh, under a patio because we get a lot of rains. So I'm gonna have hopefully a place where they won't get rained on. And then in the summertime, they're going to have to be in the sun. We don't get much rain in the summer. So when it's super, super humid, they'll be going on a line out in the sun to dry. So that's the general plan. I'd like to share more specifics about things that I've learned over the past four years. Uh, just little tips that might help you out with laundry. Here's tip number one. Can you see that? This has got mold mildew all over it. I have found that wood just doesn't work for us here in Missouri. Anything um, that's not cedar, of course, um, cedar is usually fine. Our pine walls in our cabin, they do okay, but most wood just grows mold and mildew and I'm terribly allergic. So uh, no more of the wood clips for us. Our rapid washer handle, it's kind of hard to see here, but you can tell it's growing some interesting <laughs> things on it there. And here's our old drying rack uh, as well. You can tell it's got various things growing on it. I just don't want to hang clean clothes on these wooden items. <laughs> so my solution, as much as I don't like it, is plastic. I hang most everything on these plastic hangers of different sizes, the large and the small. There's not too many things that you can't hang on a plastic hanger. And these plastic clips here work well as I use these as well. These actually hook onto the hangers. So if you have something that needs clips, like say you don't want to stretch a shirt out and you want to hang it upside down, um, you could put these on the hangers or just hang these, use these out on your line. They're pretty inexpensive and I've found them to be pretty durable. So here's an example of something that I'm planning on purchasing. It's plastic. Probably won't last as long as the pets rod I've had for almost four years now that I am use over the bathtub there but at least it won't be getting mildew and mold on it and also here on Amazon I found these clips I don't know if anyone's ever used stainless steel I know that cheap stainless steel will rust here in Missouri but these ones look pretty solid they are more expensive 
but I don't since I use the hangers I probably won't use very many of these um, these will be used probably for heavy towels blankets that kind of thing another thing that's great about using the plastic hangers to dry your clothes on is many of the items then just can go right into the closet you don't have to take them off the line and then rehang them put them in the closet and it saves you from having to have as much room for drying we've got these just little wood pieces that my husband put right above our bathtub and I can hang quite a few items in here as long as there's a little bit of space between the items uh, they dry really well except for June, July, August here in our um, humid off-grid no air conditioning <laughs> cabin. Alright so that was one of my biggest lessons learned is no wood uh, for laundry drying systems and the next thing is that I, I just really like the idea of having a dual system where you can do it by hand or you can use a machine if you happen to have solar like we do. And it's okay to just ebb and flow with the seasons. When you've got solar, use the machine. When things are really busy, uh, use the machine. Laundry doesn't have to look the same throughout the seasons, throughout the year. Um, it can ebb and flow and change based on what's going on in your life and, and your physical capabilities. As much as I wanted to continue doing my own laundry by hand, it was just too much for me so I still do a little bit by hand but um, it's you know it's okay to let somebody else do your laundry for you it's okay to purchase a machine if need be let your laundry fit with the seasons of the year and of your life where you dry your clothes is going to change throughout the seasons if you live in a humid climate or if you use a wood cook stove um, and then whether you do it by hand or use power is going to change based on your needs and the needs of your family so be flexible, think out of the box, and maybe come up with a dual purpose plan like we've been trying to do that will work for you. The third thing, big thing that I've learned, I was going to go outside to get a little different perspective than the bathroom, but actually it's the coolest place in our house right now, so I'm going to stay here. Um, I've looked into various machines and watched lots of videos, but um, as I shared, Laura at uh, Teal House Farm really made a great video, lots of information. Um, and the machine that she chose is working great for her so I think we've settled on the Costway from Amazon to be the machine. Uh, we've looked into just a regular high efficiency washer like a Kenmore and uh, the cost is almost twice and it's also uh, uses more energy and possibly more water. So I've also thought about the Ringer washer, the old um, Speed Queen or Maytag I know there's lots of people off-grid that use those. Off-grid with Doug and Stacy has a great video on that. And the reason we decided to not go that route uh, is similar to Laura's um, ideas. Uh, we've got little ones. So fingers getting caught in the ringer. There's lots of different things that I wasn't sure about with little children and that machine. And besides that, they are pretty hard to find, at least ones that are in good working condition and possibly even more expensive. I have found that you don't really even have to wring out your clothes. Here in the summer part, uh, or in the summer, June, July, August, when it's super humid, doing a little hand wringing actually is needed. It helps with getting the clothes dry. But the rest of the year, I don't even wring the clothes. They just drip dry and they get dry just fine, either outside on the line or inside with our um, wood cook stove going. It's it's been a great spot to hang clothes but and to wash clothes here in the bathtub but we really want to take the laundry out of the bathroom so that the bathtub can be used for what it's supposed to be used for and uh, yeah so that's our in a nutshell our plan our goals some of our lessons learned here on the homestead about off-grid laundry and we look forward to the day that our little laundry nook is set up and we can show you the machine and show you how it's working for us so well, thanks for watching, thanks for coming by Thousands Roots, hope you have a great day and enjoy washing those clothes however you do it.